So tools and skills, we're gonna talk about this. So diving in here, right, I just went out. This is a 3 8 uh, ratchet. This is a flathead screwdriver. Uh, this is an extension. This is a wobbly head extension. And essentially, I have a box here with a handful of sockets. So this is a 6.12 millimeter socket. Has a variety of sizes. I have a few that are extensions as well. These are all the tools you essentially need. Um, adding on an engine hoist, a chain, and perhaps a few other things to do an engine swap. Um, or to replace head gaskets and a 1997 Subaru Legacy requires a full engine be pulled out. So if I gave you these tools, so I just, I give these to you here and I say, okay, right, these are the tools you need. I need you to fix my car. Take the engine out, swap the head gaskets, resurface the, the engine blocks here, and then just put it back in for me. I, here, here's the tools, you do it, right? People are looking at me like I'm crazy, right? You're thinking, oh, Dimitri, I, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to do this, right? You know, just because I have the tools doesn't mean I can do the job. Like I have no clue, you know, either A, how an engine works, or I understand how an engine works, but I don't understand how to pull it out. I don't understand all the pieces and components, and I don't even know how to put it back together. And yet this is what's happening. And I think this is like the biggest driver here. One of my huge frustrations, I try to contain it. Um, the fact is, is that so many people now, so many people, uh, university students, professionals, everything, are running out there and checking the box. There, statistics, check. Calculus, check. Machine learning, eh, I did one exercise, check. Online class, check, right? You're checking all these boxes, and I see all these students that say, Dimitri, right? I can be a data scientist, I can be a quant, I can be a financial engineer, I can do all this stuff, I'm really smart, I went to school, I have all the tools to do the job. And yet I look at you and think, no, <laughs> having the tools means nothing. Like knowing how to program an R means nothing. Knowing statistics means nothing. All these tools you're gonna pick up mean nothing. You can't do anything with a whole bunch of tools if you don't know how to use them. And I think this is where it comes down to the aspect of how to look at this from a, from a professional setting, which I think a lot of students don't get. Even if you have checked all these boxes and you claim to have all these tools in your hand, everything that you need, at the end of the day, you don't understand how to really use them, right? I'm sure most of you know what a ratchet is, right? You know what an extension is. You can put a socket on the end and you can unscrew stuff. That's great. You know how to use the tool, right? you own the tool, but at the end of the day, you don't really understand how to solve these complex problems with the tools. And I think this is where I get frustrated a lot of times and everybody's like, oh, Dimitri, I've done X, Y, and Z and I'm really smart and I have high IQ and I went to this university and I just look at you and go, like, so, so what? What problems have you solved? Where's your experience? Like, prove to me that you have value. Prove to me that you can have a conversation in an interview that's deep and intellectual and not trying to do so. So going to a university is great, right? It allows you to get the tools you need to learn to do things or to fix problems. And so when you go to a university and I see all these people out there saying, oh, Dimitri, um, this is the textbook I use. I know everything in it. I took a class on it, right? No, you did like three or four chapters, maybe every couple of weeks. Like this, you didn't cover the entire book. Like even if you read the whole thing, you still don't actually understand the entire book. And I think this is where the aspect of a professional versus like a student or a professional versus like a rookie, um, and there's a lot of rookies out there, is that you're not diving deep enough. You're not really utilizing these skills and abilities. And so, like guys, I'm working. I've already done all this stuff. I already have a degree from a top 10 university in the world. You wanna, like, I've already done all this. I've already went through all this. And you guys think like, oh, you just run out and you just do this casual thing. Every single day I am learning because there's every single day there are more things to do. There are more techniques. There's more ways to apply this. Like right now, things that I'm reading. So these are just papers I'm reading for one, educational purposes, two, for work purposes. But like here's neural networks for prediction and forecasting of water resource variables, a review of modeling issues and applications by Mayer and Dandy. So I'm working on this paper. I also have one, it's econometric methods for fractional response variables with an application of 401k plan participation rates. 
Uh, this one is a simple, positive, semi-definite, heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent covariance matrix paper. Um, this one's by Nui West. It's one of the famous papers. Uh, and then I'm also working on another paper that someone I talked to who wrote this paper, is one of the authors. Uh, it's local and global temporal correlations for longitudinal data by Joe Lin and Wang, Wang Wang. Um, but guys, you have, you have to go deeper. Like these people have spent years. So you think about seven years, five to seven years in a PhD, writing this research and doing it on one topic. And you came along and you took a little check the box and said like, oh, I took one stats class. I took one time series class. I've taken one class on stochastic calculus. Like you're a baby. You don't even understand the conceptual depth behind this. And so just to wrap this video up, I just want to drive the message home here. The message here is like when you're in an interview, one, do not, I repeat, do not come into the interview thinking you know more than me. Like it drives me nuts when students are like, oh, and then you do this, 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 and they like start just nailing things out. And then I'm looking at them like, no, that's one, that's not correct. Two, you're missing half the facts, so you can't even make that decision. And the second part here is the resume. When you write a resume, write it in great detail. Like I want to see exactly what you know. Enough of it so I can ask you questions on it. Don't list something generic like statistics. If you list something good like stochastic calculus, that's fine. But you better be able to answer a lot of questions on it. Because if you don't, it looks really, really ridiculous. Like, oh, they're a nice guy. They're a nice girl, right? But at the end of the day, they, they don't understand anything that's listed on the resume. And a lot of times companies are hiring, they want very specific skill sets. They don't want somebody with like 101 skills listed. They want someone that's like an expert on time series applications with the REMA models, or they want somebody who can do data science, but they want to be able to do neural networks with all the mathematics and optimization of programming neural network models above and beyond like standard MLP models. So when you do the resume, try to make it narrow and try to focus it, which is the second point of this video. And the third point of this video is, if you go to graduate school and you finish and you think you're really smart, you just wasted two years or five to seven years, depending if you went for a master's or a PhD, you just wasted it. Because one of the key findings I see from those that are very successful when they come out of school, who do very well in the industry, is that you graduate realizing you know even less than you started with. Like, I learned a lot of information in this grad program, but I realized as I got going deeper, there's all these other topics that all connect to this. And I, I have to know all these, but you can't cover it in two years, five years, 10 years. It takes a lifetime. And so I hope the takeaway here is you guys realize is it's not about checking the boxes, right? You're not gonna get hired because you checked 10 boxes and listed these skills because people are gonna interview you and they're gonna realize if you know it or not. And the second point here is that like, when I work with people, I want to work with people that are really, really passionate about what they do. I want people that are going to dive deep, that are going to go so deep into these topics. They're so interested in the topics that they'll do stellar work. And I can tell you from using models in the real world, these models fail all the time because people don't take the time to look at the nitty gritty assumptions, the details, the issues behind these. And so if you're not reading academic papers after you graduate from you know, your master's or PhD, you're not really getting ahead. You're not gonna be competitive in the industry uh, and banking and tech because at the end of the day, you have to be cutting edge. You have to be up on the very, very granular details of how to do things because when it comes down to implementing these in companies, you can't just say like, oh, I can throw a neural network inside of R, right? I'm gonna ask you, well, what does it mean? Where do the variables come from? Why are these important? Uh, you know, how did you pick all these different factors? Or how many layers did you use? How many neurons did you use? What's the learning rate? How many times did you rerun it? Why is your back test even relevant? Like, there's all these questions I have that you're not gonna be able to answer because you just check the boxes. So, final wrap up of this video, do not check the boxes. Do not be the dick that comes off and says like, oh, I, I know all these things, and you list out like 10, 20, 30 random topics. Like, Guys, seriously, seriously, uh, stop doing this. You know, take the advice, um, learn to be more polished, learn to learn more depth. So when I hear people say, oh, I've taken all this stuff, I've already, like, as soon as you say that, even if you're really smart and you have taken all this and you've done all this extra detail, you're just coming off as like an ignorant dick. And I know, trust me, I know firsthand experience because I've been that guy that has come off as the dick. 
So anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know here, like start trying to develop your resume, start really digging deep, start taking on projects, doing these projects like personal projects will help you understand the material far better um, than just taking a class. Like you need to take the class, you know, so you can get the tool that you need but then you need to learn to utilize it and learn to build projects out with this. So anyways, that's my take on stop checking boxes, start learning to use your tools, don't just gather a bunch of tools, it's a huge waste of your time. Anyways, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and as always, until next time.